think it's time for another unboxing video. This is a new old stock Westinghouse transistor clock radio. This particular model is reasonably common, maybe not you know mint in box, but the uh, clock radio itself, loose in good condition, is pretty common. It's a model H968 PLA from the uh, mid 1960s. All right, here we go. There was a little bit of damage to the outer box, but the inner box is uh, pretty much mint condition. Made in Japan. Westinghouse was making uh, transistor radios in the U.S. into the early 1960s, but I believe they were done with that by the time this model was released. I don't think it's ever been out of the plastic, but it's not really sealed or anything. Here's the uh, manual. There's a little earphone tucked in there. Never used. And the original Westinghouse branded battery. Uh, hasn't leaked. A little ripped, but still sealed. Since this isn't taped, I'm just going to open it. I can fold it back up the way it was. There we go. Still nice and shiny. It's a bit of a pain to open this model and I don't want to damage the mint chrome so Probably going to not put a battery in this one, and I'll show you why in a second. But just for the heck of it, I'm going to see if the uh, clock still runs. Yep, all it took was a little shake to get it ticking again. So it's a 8 transistor clock radio. Now, I knew I already had one of these, um, and I thought I had like a partial box for it, but turns out I had almost the uh, the same thing. I got this when I first started collecting, maybe around 2010. So I've been hanging on to this one for quite a long time. I don't know why I never showed it in a video. Um, you know, this one works great as well. I don't know if you can hear it ticking or not. Now the model number is slightly different between the two of these. Um, I was actually curious as to what the difference was. Here's the box for the other one. It's a model H968PLB. The one I opened earlier was a PLA. I think it's about time I show you the radio itself and uh, how it plays. So 
Well, Maurer scores. Snow goes to second. 6-4. Here is Eddie Escobar. One for two with a walk. It's a pretty sensitive radio. I was able to pick up probably two dozen stations uh, last night with this thing. So you can see it's a pretty sensitive radio. Um, it requires a bit of a gentle touch to tune, just because there's no gear reduction on the tuning dial here. But it's not too bad because you can kind of, you know, brace your thumb and make small uh, adjustments. If you set it to auto, it'll be, uh, you know, set off by the uh, alarm or the, well or turned on by the sleep function. So if you turn the sleep dial up here, you have to turn it up past like maybe five minutes. It'll uh, switch the radio on and then this will run down and switch it back off. Um, to set the alarm there's this little knob here. You can only turn it clockwise and it moves the you know alarm hand there counterclockwise. And it hits them, you know, power hand there. Trips like you'd expect. And it has an auto shut off, which is nice if you're not, you know, home. It'll only run the radio for, looks like maybe an hour. I haven't really tested it when you're, you know, actually letting the alarm set itself off. Now, if you switch this back to off, you can also turn this knob here up to alarm and that activates the uh, you know traditional bell alarm if you want to wake up to that instead of music and it uses the same winder as the uh, the clock mechanism which is kind of interesting it does run it down pretty quick so it fully works. A lot of these old transistor clock radios, uh, you know, they may have a working radio or semi-working radio, but the clock is broken. So it's nice that both of these work. I guess the mechanism is pretty good. Although the mechanical ones are usually better than the electrical ones in that regard. A lot of the battery-powered ones um, have just failed. Either the, you know, delicate windings in the motor have gone open circuit or the mechanism's just too gummed up to run. Now, you'll notice that there's no obvious battery compartment on this set. Um, it's a bit annoying to get batteries in and out of here. There's probably a couple different ways of doing it. Um, this is what I would do. I'd put a, put a coin up in the little, little gap there and uh, pop it open on one side and then pop it open on the other side and then you can lift the whole thing out, basically. Oh, we got something very important. You have to unscrew the winder for the clock before you can remove the uh, whole mechanism. So now it should lift free, and it kind of swivels out. Why they didn't just make this plate big enough such that the winder key didn't have to be unscrewed, I don't know. Doesn't really make sense to me. 
I already have a brown plastic piece here for the uh, you know f time set knob. The circuit board for the radio is pretty compact. You can see I haven't changed out any capacitors and it still works. These knobs are plastic. Uh, the little knobs here are metal. I'm curious what the difference is between the the two sets though, the A and the B. You notice that they don't stand up the same way. The B one stands up at a you know better angle to actually see it. Maybe that's the difference. You can see the angle that it opens at is different. I'm not sure if this model came in any other colors besides luggage brown. I think curiosity is going to get the better of me. I'd like to see the inside of this one. It's a lot harder to open this one because there's uh, not really much of a gap. <coughs> oh. Let me take that knob off first. Gotta make sure I don't mix up the uh, the parts of these two. There we go. Good thing I've got a towel here. Otherwise that would have been bad. Now it does say PLA on the inside. Maybe they made some minor circuit changes. I see this one has two little capacitors here and this one does not have those capacitors. So maybe this B version is just some little tweaks like the you know the angle it opens and maybe some minor electrical changes. Oh, this one says one jewel and this one doesn't say anything so I'm guessing no jewels. So I guess the clock mechanism is slightly different too. Interesting. Well, come this far, might as well fire it up, right? Gotta love hearing these things come to life. Knob's a little stiff. I have spoken too soon. This one's not uh, not working all that well. Weird that the alignment is off like that. Unless AM680 just went off the air. That's distinctly possible. Ah, well. Kind of works. I'll pop the battery back in the other one. We'll see what happened with uh, AM680. It's one of the two local stations in the area. Huh. Oh, so it's not that radio's fault then. Something's wrong with AM680. Their signal is pretty much out. That's all I'm getting. Must be, must be having a problem with their tower or something. This little button here at the back is a switch that shuts the radio off when you close it. Another nice feature. Honestly, the only annoying thing about this model is the way you have to open it to get at the battery. Everything else is really well thought out, I'd say. So yeah, you just close this, shuts right off, and it'll come back on when you open it. And there's a felt pad here. I don't know how easy it is to see. There's a felt pad here to protect the, uh, the clock face when it's closed. And they even made little cutouts for the knobs. Seven goals in two periods. So yeah, pretty nice 60s design. Uh, you can see why they sold very well. Before I close out the video, I'll quickly show you guys the inside of the B model box. Let's see if it's any different. 
So this is like a double unboxing, I guess. Probably the only time I'll ever do that on this channel. Well, I guess never say never. But let's have them side by side. So the uh, cover is basically the same, except for saying PLB instead of A. Here's the owner's manual. It's a little more chewed up than the other one is. Here's the battery. This one is uh, perfectly sealed, no damage at all. Earphone, also unused. I think this paper here was wrapped around the radio itself inside the plastic bag, but it's been so long I don't remember. Let's take a real quick look at the manual. They basically said what I said uh, in terms of opening it. I didn't actually read the manual for that, but usually these things are designed to open with a coin. It's a little more complicated than your average transistor radio, but there's really not all that much to it. I think the average person could probably figure it out just by messing around with it. It had a 90 day warranty. Not a super generous warranty, but not too bad for the time either. Seems very few things had a warranty of a year or more. They were generally pretty expensive items. But hey, it still works uh, many years later, so must have been well made. Well, thanks for watching.